Firework has also made available the Llama 3.2 11 billion vision shock model. So you can also test this one. I will show you how you can test this really quickly. So I've given the model an image here and I can ask it convert this to JSON, this invoice to JSON. And you will see here how it's converting it to JSON. So I can go and try to look at this more closely and to see whether this was correct. I already did this test on other models and I noticed that most of the information is already here. So that's really nice to see. So there is a subtotal, which is correct. And you have all these other options. Anyway. Meta just released Llama 3.2, which includes lightweight models and the first set of vision models for the Llama series. In this video, we're going to go through the details of the announcement. And we're also going to show you where to go and try out some of these models. These are the takeaways. Basically, they are announcing Llama 3.2, which includes small and medium size vision LLMs. So there is an 11 billion parameter model and there is also a 90 billion parameter model. There's also these lightweight, which are text only models, or 1 billion and 3 billion parameter models. And the idea is that these are to fit on to edge and mobile devices. So they're more targeting applications of LLMs on these type of smaller devices. And there's also like pre-trained and instruction tuned versions of all of these models. The 3.21B and 3 billion model support context length of 128K tokens. That's interesting because this will allow us to use these models for agentic type of workflows, which I think is one of the targets here. And they report state-of-the-art for on-device use cases like summarization, instruction following, and rewriting tasks. They mention here that there are 11 billion and 90 billion vision models are meant to be drop-in replacements for their corresponding text model equivalents. And the results that they report are quite good and in fact competitive with some of the models of similar sizes that are available today. They also mentioned this Llama stack distributions, with, which apparently is a very new thing. And the idea is to make it easy for developers to build on top of the Llama models. So there's a lot of different features and APIs that you can leverage to build all sorts of applications like RAG applications, agentic type of workflows, and so on. You can work with these models in different environments. So there's like single node, on-prem, cloud, and on-device, which will be interesting to see how the community adopts these APIs. Let's go through a few of the takeaways here through this announcement. There's a lot of details here, so I won't spend too much time on all the details, but I'm gonna highlight some of the interesting ones. So these are the 3.2 models. Again, there is an 11B and 90B, which are the vision models. And these models, by the way, they are very capable at text-based tasks because it was trained to have vision capabilities without sacrificing the text capabilities. These are the results for the vision instruction tune models. You can see here for Llama 3.2, this one compared to something like GPT-4 or Mini. And I've used this model here in the past for a lot of like vision related tasks. And it's pretty good model for that. I haven't really gotten a lot of success with Cloud3 models for any type of vision task. In fact, I've done a few videos on this already showing that the GPT-4 models usually tend to perform better on all kind of vision related tasks. But it's interesting to see the results here. Now, if this is true, then things are about to get pretty interesting. And this is something I tweeted because vision capabilities is now sort of a requirement as we enter this phase of building more advanced agentic type of systems where these models should not only just support text, but support a variety of modalities as well. This is gonna allow us to build more complex type of applications, which a lot of developers are now interested in building. But you can see the results here if you compare, it's all performing GPT-4 Mini on the majority of these benchmarks. You can see this one, for instance, MMLU, which a lot of people are interested in. You can see the performance gap there. Pretty good model overall. Then there is this lightweight instruction tune benchmarks. So these are the smaller models. So these are only text only models. You can see how they perform. Obviously with the 1B compared to the 3B, there's a significant boost in performance, but it's interesting to see the performance compared to the Gemma 2, which is from Google, and the 5.3.5, which is from Microsoft. This 5.3.5 model is a pretty good model right here. And you see the performance gap between these models. But when compared to Gemma 2, 2 billion, I think this is the more comparable model of the two here. You will see how this model significantly outperforms across the board this Gemma 2 model. That's very exciting to see because now we have a very strong small model that can be used and it's really fast and can be used for all sorts of applications. These models, Lama 3.21B and Lama 3.23B 
are meant to be used for like mobile applications and things like that. But I do believe that you can still use them for like regular type of applications. It's just now unlocking more because of how they have created these models and how lightweight they have become. It now unlocks applications for on edge and mobile devices as well. These are more details about the vision models, how they were trained. And again, they do mention here that they're not sacrificing performance on the language model specifically. They have used cross attention layer and they are using adapter weights, which help to integrate the pre-trained image encoder into the pre-trained language model. So they're not sacrificing the text capabilities. Those remain intact, right? You can see uh, providing developers a drop-in replacement for Lama 3.1 models. Here are some examples and demos on what you can do with the vision models. It's useful for image understanding. You can reason about information. You can also analyze charts, graphs, and all sorts of vision-related tasks. This is talking about what they do with their smaller models, how they came about with these 1 billion and 3 billion Lama 3.2 models. And they have done something very similar, which other companies have done, like NVIDIA. And this is something that I've also featured on my Twitter account. They are using pruning, which obviously helps to reduce the size. And then knowledge distillation, which is something they have been talking about. When they released the Llama 3.1 model, they spoke about this and the idea that they want to use these models to get more performance smaller models out of these, so like distill these smaller models. And they share details about how they do that here. Here's a little like nice chart that's showing that. They're using like logit data from Llama 3.18 billion and 70 billion models. You can see it here. And that's for like pre-training. And then for instruction tuning of these models, like this post-training step, they're also leveraging the now classical techniques like supervised fine tuning, rejection sampling, and direct preference optimization. And the cool thing about these models right here is that they support 128k tokens. So these are the Lama 3.2, 1 billion, and 3 billion instruct models. So this is done in post-training. And they're using synthetic data as well. So they mentioned here the use of synthetic data, which is something I think that a lot of companies are now going to start to use. And you will see that they're leveraging the 405 billion instruct models. So if there was ever any question about how that model was going to be used, well, here is an answer for that. They're going to use it to create like synthetic data generation to train their future foundation models, which is, this is a good example of that. So that's exciting to see. And I think a lot of companies are catching up with that. I've seen a lot of like startups starting to use these models for knowledge distillation, which is really cool to see and collecting like synthetic data as well. These are just some demos here. I really like this one. So for instance, you can build a simple Llama agent and you can interact with it. You can build this application here. Basically it summarizes like an email or something like that. And from that summarization, it extracts action items because these models also have tool use capabilities. And then now you can create a meeting. So it'll be interesting to use these models like this. And again, we're talking about these smaller models. And there is some mention about the open rewrite eval, which other models have also reported results on. You will see here that the Lama 3.2, 1 billion and Lama 3.2, 3 billion are much better models uh, this particular task, you will see here it's being demoed. So it's, this is more about rewriting pieces of information. That's a very useful task as well. And these demos have been based on unreleased quantized models. So just note that. And again, here we have another example of a writing assistant. You can use it to help you write emails and so on. And they're much faster models, obviously, because they're light, more lightweight. And this was an interesting part of the release. There's not a lot of conversation about this. In fact, not a lot of people know about this part of the Llama Tree efforts from Meta. From what I understood, they are working on APIs to make it easier for developers developers to build really complex applications with these Llama models. And I'm not sure about adoption specifically, but I like this idea that there is a sort of dedicated APIs to be able to build like agentic applications, right? And you have all these capabilities and functionalities like prompt store or prompting, and you have like safety type of features as well. And you can build assistance and you have these memory components and you have orchestrators, all of these different components. We are sort of figuring out in the community, what are the important components to build this agentic type of application? So all of this could change. 
and evolve. But I like these initial efforts to be able to do this and to offer to the community something that's more standardized. Because there's so many ways you can run these models. There's so many ways you can build on top of the Llama models. But the fact that Meta is actually taking initiative to build these APIs is actually a really good sign and might promote even more adoption of these Llama models. So what this entails is they have a Llama CLI. That's really cool because developers love that, obviously. Uh, so you can interact with these models from your CLI. And there is client code support for different languages like Python, Node, Kotlin, Swift. And there are Docker containers as well multiple distributions. So you see these are the different environments that are supported, single node, cloud Llama stack distributions on all of these cloud providers. And you have the on-device Llama stack distribution as well for these are more for the iOS and implemented via PyTorch and then on-prem as well supported by Dell. One thing that I've noticed with the Llama efforts from Meta is that they have included a lot of developers and partners, which is great to see because they talk a lot about standardization. And I think the only way you can standardize things is by getting inputs from what other companies are doing and being able to develop something that you know developers can adopt and can easily build on top of. Like we want to be able to build really complex agentic applications today, but most of the frameworks that are available today can only get you so far. So it would be important and interesting to see how this Llama stack distribution continues to develop. And obviously they need a lot of support and a lot of feedback for this. So if you get a chance to use this and get to test it out, there is a repo for this. It's linked somewhere in this blog post. So do try it out, take a look at it and provide the team some kind of feedback. I will be doing the same as well. This is more about safety stuff. You can look at it. That's really important as well. And there are some other guides, and these are all their partners. Overall, very impressed by what Meta has released here. I like the fact that they are focusing on these lightweight models to make it more accessible for developers to build applications, especially mobile type of applications on top of LLMs. I also like the vision models. These are the models that we were waiting for. And so I'm excited to go and dig deeper into these models and how they compare with other models like GPT-40 with your vision capabilities and also the cloud models as well. You can find more details about the Llama model series here on this particular website. There's a lot more details here. And also Hugging Face have hosted a their models as well there. The last thing I want to highlight here is where you can test these models if you're interested. So the place to try this out if you want is Fireworks. There are a couple of other services where you can test these models, but I tend to use Fireworks. I really like how easy they make it for people to test these newer models. And we have available here the Llama 3.2 3B Instruct models. You can go here and test it out. We'll be doing that on a separate video. Firework has also made available the Llama 3.2 11 billion vision instruct model. So you can also test this one. I will show you how you can test this really quickly. So I've given the model an image here and I can ask it convert this to JSON, this invoice to JSON. And you will see here how it's converting it to JSON. So I can go and try to look at this more closely and to see whether this was correct. I already did this test on other models and I noticed that most of the information is already here. So that's really nice to see. So there is a subtotal, which is correct. And you have all these other options. Anyways, these are places where you can test. I will provide links in the description and I'll also be testing. So I'll do a follow-up to this video to talk more about some of the capabilities that I'm excited about, what else you can do with these models. So stay tuned for that. Go ahead and like this video and subscribe if you haven't so that you don't miss that video and leave some comments below if you have any questions about what else you'd like me to test these models on and how you are planning to use them or any questions in general. I'm happy to provide more insights about what I already know about these models. So thank you for watching and I'll see you all on the next one.